Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now for you trout fishermen out there, do you guys actually realise how fast a trout can swim? Yes, it's not all dry flies and not much movement and a gentle rise. A lot of the time they're eating other fish, they're eating other fry, and they will power up and they will chase things. And a lot of anglers I see fly fishing on still waters, they're still stuck in that little slow, creepy little, which does work, at times, it does work, slow, creepy, crawly, little insect type thing. But on other occasions, especially in cold weather in the winter, trout love cold weather, they are big time switched on in cold weather. They will chase, they will hit hard. It's a technique called fast stripping. Woo! No, it's not that type of fast stripping. Well, let's go down and see a man who might be able to give us a few tips and you catch the extra fish. So what exactly do we mean by fast stripping? Now, I brought the camera up here because it's really windy today. It's not the greatest day for trout fishing in the middle of winter, but it's mild, and this is the only place that you might be able to hear without the wind roaring in the microphone. So, flies out there. What I've done is just lay the fly down, stick it to the surface, use the water tension, the surface tension, to suck a little bit of line off when you pick it back. Okay, I'm in an area where I probably wouldn't normally fish because there's trees here. Um, and if you do, keep on the upwind side of the trees so that your cast is not going into the bushes. Uh, even in, you know, in, in the summer you see the leaves, you tend to be more conscious of them. In the winter, there's no leaves on the trees. It's really easy to cast into the dark areas and you don't actually see that dreaded overhanging branch. Right, so we're going to lay a nice long line out there. What did I just say? What did I just say? It's... Oh, I got my fly back. How lucky was that? That's talking and filming at the same time. Just going to change my angle. I missed that branch up there. And what I'm going to do is lay a long fly line out and show you three different ways of, we call it fast retrieve. Winter fishing fast retrieve. It does actually work in the summer as well, obviously. The reason my right hand sleeve is showing bare flesh is that I've been doing some underwater filming as well. Earlier on. Right. Your fly's out. What I do is, I'll show you in a second, I use countdown technique. Say that's five seconds, allow for the fly to sink, and then tighten up, and then I'm doing this figure of eight like this. Now you can, oh my God, is that, oh, it's a carp. It's all right, don't worry, it's a carp. Panic over, guys. Figure of eight, as fast as you like. But the most important thing, if I come up here, is to keep this line over your finger so you can lock off when you do get a take. Otherwise, you're just gonna get like this, and you're gonna miss it, it's gonna pull back. I miss it. Let me let, let me throw a line out again there. Right. It's a nice carp as well. Okay, so I'll do it again. You'll figure of eight in like this. And you can do this really fast. Now the most important thing is point down the line. You want that take to come straight onto the or well, straight through the fly line so it pulls a hook in. You don't want any slack, you don't want any twitching if you hold the rod too high. You hold it up high when you do this it will leapfrog in and out in jerks now in between those jerks it will fall back bet your life that's when a trout grabs it and he's got slack to pull against and you'll feel just a bump a tweak and he's blowing the fly out so try and keep your line absolutely going straight up the rod that way you're pulling directly onto your fingers like this with a figure of eight and right up to the bank just raise the rod top look for the fly if you can and Stick it to the surface a couple of times. Just, look, I don't normally, it's just an easy way to do it. And out we go again. Right, show you the other way to do it. It's a bite going past at the moment. Quad bite. We'll let that one run through. Okay, the other way is a long strip, and that is one that really does give you a slamming take. So I'm out there. I've used my countdown technique. I'll tell you that in a second. So let's say it's five seconds. I'm going to tighten up and then I'm going to do about bang, 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 stop, bang, bang, stop, one, two, three, stop. But all the time I'm waiting for the tape to come on here because there's a big gap between here and reaching back up here again to grab for the next strip. As you do that, the trout takes and you can let the line, it will, it will strip through your fingers and you won't pull the hook in. So be aware, as you strip like this, keep that finger tight. So you're going through your fingers here quite tight when you're doing a fast strip. I'll just show you again. I stick into the surface because that helps me get accurately and away from the tree. 
Now we go right over the other side where the biggest trout in the world is. There we go. Two, three, four seconds, five. Bang, 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 bang. Okay, but just keep the line straight down the rod top. Point at the fish. Don't forget to break up that retrieve. You can pause just a second or two and then strip him fast again. It's enough to trigger that fish into striking. Or you can use what we call the pendulum retrieve, which is just a regular, long, smooth motion. And this one is much less strenuous and you'd think it'd be too repetitive for the fish, but don't forget, you need to lock off as soon as you get a take. So there you got the different types of retrieves long ones or even a hook up to camera. Does it get any better than that? I think not. Plus, I was filming on my own, so that was a bit of fun as well. Keep that line tight when you strip those fish on and that helps to pull the hook in and get that point through the jaw and you know you're gonna get it in the net. What about that for a fish, guys? A beauty. Fish must go. Six, six pounds or so. Okay, here's a totally awesome tip when you are stripping fast on those long strips. Do not use light leader, you will get bust off. I want eight pounds at the moment. So I tend to up it a little bit when I'm stripping fast like this. Now you can see it. Nice big long strips, but I can go bang, I can lock off, and then the fish should hook itself against the pull of the fly line. Again, hopefully not up the tree. I could, I would have liked to have done it somewhere else, but it's so windy, you won't hear anything with the wind in the mic. Okay, clear everything of your feet, don't stand on the coils. Otherwise, again, you'll get a slamming take, the line will whistle out. You're standing on the coils, the rod goes down, classic beginner's mistake, bang, it's gone. Eight pound line or not. Now you can, you can break this up with fast strips or long strips. You can do real long ones, just a pendulum swing of the arm, regular. What we call a regular slip, a strip like this is constant speed, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Okay, but I find if you can throw that predator switch in the trout with, let it sink, three or four seconds, with fast, broken, intermittent strips, stop, start, stop, start, it's just like pike fishing. When it stops, they go, whoa, what was that? It starts again, they go, I better grab it, it's going, bang. got to be switched on waiting for that tape to come. And then a the fly is doing this underwater. You can see here there's a lovely still glassy calm area and just to the right there's a strong wind picking up pushing a ripple across the water. Now that's the ideal situation for fast stripping anything flies, lures, nymphs Fast retrieve seems to work much better when there's a good ripple on the water. I believe there's more light that gets reflected and refracted through the water down below and it makes that fly stand out a bit more. So don't be afraid to cast into the wind or across the wind and then strip back fast. There we go guys, that one hit me like a ton of bricks. Absolutely stripping in, small fire bird. Absolutely nailed me. That was doing those long fast strips. Tried it with a small one, it's a nice looking fish too. Nice looking fish. Let's get that camera up here for you. Now, the thing is with fast stripping, you should, you should get a good hook up. But the problem being, they're gonna snap at it and you'll be able to get a hook up right at the front edge. We'll find out when I'll get this one in. Assuming we get it in. This is, this is a totally awesome snarl up I've got, guys. <laughs> so it does all work out well. It's jamming. I think we're going to play this one in by hand. Tell you 
up people. This is probably the best looking fish I've caught this season. Let me just show you. Just there, I hope you can see that in the front of the jaw is the fly, but I'm lucky it's in the bone. There's a fish. Really good condition fish there. Now, third way of stripping, it's really used by saltwater fly fishermen predominantly to get a constant, fast, very fast speed. But you can also wear your arms out doing it, and that is to tuck it underneath your arm. You tuck the reel under your arm, okay, and then you're going to double overhand like this. I'll do it slow first. You're doing this, but that rod should be pointing straight down the line. You do it very fast like this. You get the hook up, you just pick up. Let it slide through your fingers. You can either take it on the reel or you can fight it as per normal. So I'll show you the speed I would normally do it at. Get over to the other side for a nice big long strip. Just like this. Here we go. Rods underneath your arm. You're all ready to go. And bang, 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 bang. And again, you can break it up you get slamming takes like this sometimes. What I would suggest is do, because they're quite energetic, say six or eight of those, take a rest, move swims, change areas, move your boat, anything to uh, break your arm up because it will wear you out. But it can be that one retrieve that actually in cold weather can get you a take and that's what you're after. In the winter you are looking for just a one or two fish. Oh, he's behind it, he's behind it. Oh, come on, take it. I'll take it. Oh, no. Oh, he turned off. One actually followed it right in close, and that was unbelievable. He was zooming behind the fly, which means, of course, I've got to have another cast. If you've got a, like a bead head like this one, this is a Firebird one, so it's quite chunky, quite weighty. It gets down in the, in the colder weather, they might be a little bit deeper. So, use a countdown technique and just mix it up anything between three, five, ten seconds. Big reservoirs, obviously, you can go a lot deeper and you also have the advantage of having a sinking line to take your fly down. Now, speed stripping like this is very successful, a constant retrieve. It can drive the fish nuts. It can also drive the angler nuts because it's very, very tiring. There you see, I get a hook up and I pull out the fish, unfortunately. Rarely do you get fish close in like this, a don't spook. They'll follow that fly or lure right in close. But if you throw the lure at them again and it's just sinking, it doesn't have the same reaction. They're just disdainful of it and they turn away. What they do is they really like to come from distance, I find. Any trout, when you do a nice long cast and then you start stripping back in, that's where it seems to work best. It doesn't seem to me, in my experience, work let's say margin fishing, close in fishing. You need to be at some sort of dif distance to allow that fly to travel through the water. They're following, 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 and then something kicks their brain into auto and they take the fly. Guys, got one there. No idea what sort of size it is. But being Abington, it's going to be a nice fish. In the edge. Oh, right in the edge. Right in the edge. I'm going to take a risk here guys, I'm going to try and get you a slow motion shot. Fish might come on.
guys, the wind's coming up now. Had some good fish there, really pleased. Three rainbow trout, not bad on a winter's day through fast retrieving. But one final totally awesome tip, let's get back and see that guy in the nice warm, well, totally awesome fishing room. He'll tell you a special loop knot that I use and it just gives a little bit extra action to that fly. But I better have a couple more casts, haven't I? Now that fishing knot I was telling you about that can actually give you more action or more activity when you're retrieving the fly is this. And I'm gonna tie it on a giant hook and 30 pound yellow line, just so hopefully you'll be able to see this knot. We use for marlin fishing, so the hook is completely unshackled from the knot, it's not rigid and gives a lot of action and it works with a fly as well. This is how I tie it. Okay, what you gotta do, imagine this is the end of your fly leader, you just tie an overhand knot like that, like so. Just a regular overhand knot there, you can pull it down. You then thread the tag end, as we call it, through the eye of the hook. I can, I can pull this knot down a bit and I'm just moving the bend of the hook up, okay? Then I go through with the tag end through the loop Apologies for my nails, I've just come in and all that mud fishing, it's everywhere. Right, so you've got it like that. I don't know if you can see that there. You should be able to just see that. Then you're going to take the tag end around the main part of the leader four times. One, two, three, four. And then this tag end goes back through that knot that you've made, the overhand knot, just there. If you can see that, you pull it down. Now, a bit of spit on it, a little bit of spit, and that should pull those coils down. See them bunch down, pull it tight, pull it tight. I can't pull it really tight, I'm gonna use my teeth. Now it's tight, okay? Now you can see, if I snip that tag in off in a minute, that loop knot is just hanging there. So when we marlin fish with a live bait, the live bait can swim all around. It doesn't tangle up, look how loose that is. It's not rigid. And that is the loop knot, which works really well with a fly. And I've got one here, exactly that. Now, whether you can see that one or I don't know, this is a famous pearly daddy long legs. And I, as I say, don't get me wrong, it's on about 30 or 40 pound mono, just to show you the knot there. But you can see when you're retrieving that fly, it's loose, it moves around anywhere, up in the, if you're on a river, it works really well as well, because look at the movement, it's got full movement there. It's not held rigidly with a knot against the eye. A little totally awesome tip for you, it might just get you the extra trout. One final hunch I've got, guys. There's a batch of fish in the middle lake. The four guys have been catching fish, but they're really close together. The men are standing really close together now. I'm wondering, because they've stopped catching if they've pushed fish over to the other side of the lake. And even though it's in the wind, I mean, that's why they're there, because it's off the back, nice and comfortable. It might be uncomfortable fishing into the wind, but could be fish here. I feel it's worth one last throw. I think I have a move.